presented by that time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster, this is Shonen Jumping the Gun! The show where we set our sights on the first chapter of a manga and decide if it's a misfire or a bullseye. Let's see how many rounds are in this magazine. On today's episode, Two on Ice! Welcome everybody, it is I, your hardworking host, Kermit the Grog, uh, joined by my cold as ice uh, compatriot over here, Isekai Sensei Sama, Brad. Uh, hey, Brad, how you doing? What's going on? Cool as ice. <laughs> We're talking about an ice series today. Yeah, and I did get very cold from this. It is, it's a chilly one, but it's a good one. Uh, we are talking about Two on Ice, the, uh, I believe the newest manga at time of this recording. I believe so, To premiere yeah. in Shonen Jump. Uh, less than a month ago at time of recording, its first chapter came out September 24th, 2023. Yeah, at time of recording, only four chapters. Yeah, last chapter four literally just dropped yesterday, so. But as always, I only read the first chapter. I only read the first chapter. I am mostly caught up. I did not read that new chapter yet, but that's, <laughs> that's my job, because here on Shonen Jumping the Gun... Uh, I make Brad read the first chapter of a manga, uh, and we talk about it, and we form long-ranging opinions and ideas based on not that much information. The smallest amount of information. The smallest amount. That's where we're jumping the gun. The only way we could make worse decisions about it is if we only read the description. Which I've done before. We've done that in the Discord when we were guessing at things, and it's like, this is not worthwhile. Let's just wait for it to come out and read it, and then also agonize over every little detail. <laughs> So Two on Ice is a, I still don't remember exactly what to call it. It's like a duos ice skating sports manga. Yeah, what do they call it? Couples? Couple, is it couples? I pairs? Think I think pairs is the word they use then. I think in the manga they specifically say couples. Okay, maybe they make yeah. the point of that being weird because one of the other, the, one of the older groups our main characters are working with, we'll get to that in a second, are siblings. Yeah, and the um, main character is like, couples? Are they dating? Yeah, and it's like we're brother and sister don't be icky and i'm like yeah okay i can dig it uh so two on ice is about uh and i never get the name so apologies but there is a boy from i don't know if he's from hokkaido or some more kind of yeah, yeah. woodsy not backwoods area or something uh and one day he sees this ice skating thing i think when they're in tokyo and just completely falls in love with it he's like i want to do this but he also falls in love with this young girl who is doing it I so believe. there's an important point where the main character excels at all of the sports that he tries and ice skating not specifically figure skating but ice skating itself was the first one that he tried that he actually had to try and learn whereas all of the other things he did running baseball whatever he just took to naturally and so he got really into ice skating it filled his brain because that was the thing that he actually had to, to, to try work for to attain. Yeah. Right. So they go to Tokyo. He goes to Tokyo with his dad and his dad knows he likes ice skating. And so he's like, hey, I heard you did really good in the you know, race or whatever they had. Can you show me? Let's go to an ice skating rink. And the kid's like, yeah, OK, cool. Um, and I think he's in third grade at the time. I that sounds say. about right. And the whole thing is that like they don't really have like all year ice rinks where he lives. It's only right, because like when it's the outside. lake freezes yeah. over. As opposed to Tokyo, where the they never get or hardly ever get actual frozen lakes. And so there's ice skating rinks all over the place. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had more of the story then. I can if you You want. can keep going. <laughs> you're the one that read it recently. I'm just sort of in the story now. You're, you're, I did a skim. <laughs> so I read it a couple weeks ago. They get to this ice skating rink and they find out that actually they can't uh, go ice skating. There's no free skate right now because there's a competition going on. And it's called this thing called figure skating. And this boy, he's never heard of this before. And his dad says, do you want to check it out? Yeah, let's check this out. And so they go and they watch this ice skating competition. And there's a lot of young kids in this. And one of them is a young girl who just does so much better than everybody else. She's doing jumping twirls and all the kind of like super fancy stuff that you expect adults to be doing. She's some kind of child prodigy. Yeah, a wonderkind. And... 
the main character basically, it, it, I'm going to use the word fall in love, the yes. phrase fall in love, yes, but he's same. not particularly falling in love with the girl as much as he is falling in love with the skill that she is exhibiting. It's a little of both, I would say. I think they're too young to attribute. Not true romance, but there's like a certain, like, I guess you could, you could read it as romance. Infatuation, I feel like if we're, we're, we're slice and dice like that. But yeah, it's like some of it does seem like part of it is on the figure scene, but also almost like a mentor. Like you were just this like dream human that I learned my love for this thing from. Yeah. And I need to find you and catch up to you. And so we cut to years later. He's uh, second or th- uh, third year middle school, I want to say. And right. he's going to go to Tokyo for high school, I believe. Um. And as soon as he gets down there, he's like, I need to go ice skating. I can finally ice skate all the time. And so he goes to an ice skating rink because he hears he can do free skating. And uh, he finds out, oh, he can't right now because there's a competition. Well, I think there's practice for a competition, right? Going on right now. On one of the rinks. Um, And it's more of like an open practice kind of thing. Um, but he goes out there and he meets this girl. Now, at the time, he isn't sure if this is the same girl. Yeah. Because she's disappeared and he's been trying to follow her career since he was very little. But she disappeared from the figure skating Exited world. the scene. Um, but he's got this inkling. He thinks that this might be the girl. And... He goes out there and he exhibits lots of skill and, and she sees him doing this and says, Hey, do you want to train with me? And he's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, let's do that because I want to learn figure skating. It's my dream. And so they come back later that night for the private practice times. And at these times, uh, basically only, you know, a single or doubles can be on the ice at a time so they can practice their routines and everything. And when they get there, uh, one couple's group is just getting off the ice. He recognizes them as the uh, receptionist that he talked to earlier that day. And he's like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. These are the siblings, I believe we spoke of earlier. Right. And the girl comes and starts explaining how all of this works. And she's like, oh, yeah, they do couples and he's like what? they're dating oh my gosh and yeah she, she's like no, no no they're actually twins uh paternal that's the right one for that right yeah um fraternal or paternal i forget paternal twin sounds right the ones where they're not identical <laughs> i think it's fraternal because why would it, what would it, a, it's, a, a paternal twin applies a maternal twin and i don't know what that means yeah anyway so he gets out on the ice and they're like, show us what you can do. And he immediately tries to do the hardest possible move he can, he, that he knows, which is like the triple Lutz or something, which if you know figure skating, which I only have the very faintest passing knowledge of, it's a very difficult jump and spin. Um, I think you have to spin three times and then land in a certain way. And he basically pulls it off. Um, because he's been practicing for many years. It turns out that when he was younger, he would sneak out at one o'clock in the morning and go and skate on the lake until the sun came up almost every single day. And he would sneak home. So some of the idea is that he's talented, but it's very like rough because he's been doing this all alone. He's got no instruction. It's just him attempting to recreate what he's seeing. So there's a bunch of little bits of, the mechanics and the technique of it that he does not have. He is literally a rough diamond. Yeah. And so after talking about this and, and showing off what skill he does have, they, they go, well, he's got a lot of potential here. And so we should nurture this at which point he's talking to this girl and she confirms. Yes. In fact, she is that girl uh, that he remembers. And the reason that she stopped doing figure skating was because she wanted to do couples figure skating 
but there was no one for her to pair with because she was too advanced. And so she basically dropped out, but she's been still skating this whole time, just on her own practicing competitions until she could find a partner and she sees the potential to have a partner in our main character who is kind of i guess we've said infatuated yeah with her and i think and but not in a cre- like not it, it is in some ways uh hi here's my future vision in some <laughs> ways it's they address that it's kind of weird but i don't think he's creepy about it yeah so i think I, they just acknowledge it like You've been following her career and you know all of the, like, you know, the moves to her stuff and you know all this information about yeah, her. She does because... make a joke about him being a stalker. Yeah. 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 Um, but they do play it off as, as a joke. Um, that is the whole summary, by the way, of the first chapter. And uh, I, I personally, I think that um, the, the thing that he feels uh, when he's older, I do get the feeling that he's got some kind of like romantic feelings. But I think his competitive and like um, the spirit of his athletic ability is the main focus. Yeah. That's the thing that he's more passionate about. And then the these romantic feelings that he might have are sort of like underneath that. It's like a crush. Yeah. The, the skating comes first and the romance stuff, while clearly present, is definitely kind of a lower simmer right. on things. So now with our our summary and things out of the way, Brad, what did you think of Two on Ice? Well, I wanted to specifically talk about the art stuff because there's something I noticed when I started reading this series that like there's sort of a new standard manga style that I've been noticing in oh. a lot of these new series, which it's not particularly bad or anything like that. But I'm noticing uh, similarities in a lot of new series where it's just sort of the way that, um, you know, faces are drawn and like body structures and backgrounds, especially um, the the series that do backgrounds properly uh, that you can't put Dairy Queens in. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a really good job of just doing, you know, real good detailed backgrounds that don't overpower the point of the scene. Um, and I don't know if that's, if there's like some kind of tracing thing that they're doing where they're taking like actual landscapes or cityscapes or whatever, and like tracing over it that the assistants are doing that. Or if, you know, the, the manga is actually taking the time to like go, the backgrounds are very important. I'm going to spend my time on those. Um, but I do appreciate that. Especially in, in the fact that they aren't overpowering. It's too They're, nice doing that. I guess I want to confirm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, and, and I, the the thing is, is that, like, I think the art in Two on Ice, there's, there's nothing that jumped out to me that was like, oh, this is amazing art. But it was, it's the kind of thing where it's like, this is very competent. It's doing what it needs to do to convey the story, but it's not like going above and beyond. I would sense. say that, yeah. Um, people talked about it and I definitely saw it a little bit and it, it gets less as the chapter goes on, oddly enough. I think some of the proportions and faces are a little potatoey at the beginning of it. And then see that, that yeah. stops happening all of a sudden. And I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's how he just draws them when they're younger or something. That's what I, that, yeah, I was thinking that I think that's the way that the younger kids are drawn are more sort of like squishy. Because which... I remember noticing that. And then later on, I stopped thinking about it. And then when people were talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I did have that weird thought that it looked kind of funky, but like, as I've been reading it, it hasn't dawned on me like this art's weird or bad and stuff like that. So it's it's got a look to it. I like it. Um, but like I feel like what you said is very good. Like it's competent, it does its yeah. job, it's not incredible. There's just it feels very serviceable. And I don't it's, think that's bad, but that's not like sterling. Right. It's not the kind of series that you would go, I'm gonna read this for the art. Yeah, the art is not why you're here. The here I think you're here for the story. So I guess with that. Brad, what did you think of the story of Two on Ice, Chapter One? You know, I'm with with this series and the next one that we'll be talking about. Um, I'm I'm starting to think that I might have a problem because I think I just like things too much. Oh, I thought you were going to say I don't like sports. Well, that's the thing. I don't like sports. 
And I'm, this whole the part of the quest of this entire podcast was finding what does Brad not want to keep reading, right? And, and I think they, I think we've already found episode three. It's sports, but that's the thing. I'm reading this and I'm going. This is compelling. Yeah, I am compelled to read this. I enjoyed reading the whole thing. I liked the little bit of interaction he had with his dad. I liked the obsession that he got as a kid but didn't like i mean you could probably say he went too far with it he didn't go too far with it as a manga protagonist as a actual human being he took it too far but but that's like the joy um, of manga of people like reaching out for their yeah. dreams and working very hard in that and that's kind of the joy maybe just for me of manga especially shonen stuff and then when he grows up and he meets this girl again the interaction that they have i i just loved all of it and i'm sitting here reading this going i don't care about skating at all why do i like this because it's this it because this is why like as someone who will always talk up i shield 21 this is why i love shonen sports stuff when it's done well when you get this because it's both the the work and the climb at this thing that i love that i want to be better at so you get that as a story thing, but you also get to learn about the craft, but also the interpersonal stories and in they're figuring out. And sometimes you get to throw a romance in there. Like, I know you're big on like the cute romance slice of life stuff. So it's like, I mean, this is a little less cute, but like this is, that's part of what this is, is yeah. those interpersonal stories amidst the backdrop of this sport and how that draws you in. I mean, you've been reading Akane Banashe. I don't think you've been reading Beat in Motion. Beat in Motion's no. a little bit more... Um, uh, more big emotion feel stuff than Akane Banashi, which is a yeah. little bit more shown in I would say. But like, it's that same idea. It's everybody's working at a craft. That craft is not fighting, but it is a thing they are working on and the interpersonal and inner conflicts that occur from that. Yeah. And that, that growth. And not every sports manga is made the same and follows reality as much or as little. But like, I think that's what makes a good one. Yeah. And I mean... If if we weren't doing this series, I would you not would have, have never this come up across this because ice skating thing not something I'm interested in. But uh, basically, by page three, I was like, I was into this, and by the end of the last page, I was like, oh crap, I'm going to keep reading this. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what this podcast is about: is introducing you to. New things. We I all thought I was the things. curmudgeon. I got too much out. to read already. Too bad. <laughs> You're on a podcast, baby. This is what you got to do. <laughs> so um, I guess echoing a lot of Brad's points, I find it very compelling. I'm going to try not to future vision too much. Hmm. Um, it's I, I don't know how to capture this feeling in words exactly. I felt at the finish of chapter one, I felt compelled of like, I'm going to read another one. But it felt like I was, it was like I was in its flow. It wasn't like I was jazzed about reading the next one. I was happy about it, but it was just like, I'm caught up in this now. Mm. Like I am in the flow of this thing now. I need to see where it goes. Like there's a lot of curiosity, but it's not like, oh man, two on ice. It's like, yeah, I'll get to two on ice. Like I'm in it. I need to keep up with it now. I'm in its flow. I want to keep reading it, but it's not like whatever makes something like a, oh man, I got to read this. But mm. like, I, Outside of the death cult, I want to read it. You know, <laughs> I find it, I find it compelling. I love. Um, it reminded me a lot of an anime I watched many years ago called Welcome to the Ballroom, which was about ballroom dancing. Um, but that one was definitely a lot more about the interpersonal relationships than the nitty gritty of the act of ballroom dance. Yeah. Um, personally, I like the nitty gritty because um, I like learning about those things, and it lets you go like, oh man, this guy's doing this thing. That's an actual real thing that can let him do this or something like that. So, but I like the idea that like, he's really good, but it's rough. It's not just like, Oh my gosh, he's this incredible winter kid. It's like, he worked really hard, but it's rough because he never got proper teaching. He's never mm -hmm. had somebody watching him do it. He's just trying to recreate it with his body. Right. And that creates it also besides an interesting growth thing, an interesting, um, like social dynamic between it's like, hi, I learned from videos of you doing this. <laughs> so I'm like, you're weird, messed up, I'm like your doodle bob. <laughs> I'm you, but not quite. Yeah. I'm a little rough around the edges, but I mostly have what you can do. 
so I guess we've had our thoughts. Uh, Brad, it's time for our, our verdict. Isekai Sensei Sama. Uh, what is your, your passing verdict on this one? Uh, if we want to, if we want to quick recap, we go from certified flop at the bottom, which is a grave you would spit on a flop, which means it will <laughs> die in the normal flop time. It will live, which means it will live maybe shortly after that. I would say like, it's not going to get an anime, maybe sub a hundred chapters, a hit, which means like it's doing good. It's living, it's thriving, it's making its way. It'll probably get an anime and a supernova, which is akin to a demon Slayer Jujutsu Kaisen of like, this is an industry mover. Yeah. So what would you give this one? I'm going to call this one a hit. Okay. I don't think that it's going to, you know, take off and be like the greatest thing ever. Um, but I can see this getting an anime in the future. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think uh I think all the pieces are there to to live long enough to to get an anime and hopefully wrap up in a compelling way. Yeah. I'm giving it an it'll live. I don't think especially from what I've seen die and shown in jump. Yeah. I don't think this is going to live that long and some sometimes these verdicts are peppered with our emotions and sometimes they aren't and this one's just sort of the grim realization of like it's a little bit of hope to make it they live over a flop but like like i said i got i got caught up in it so i i think it'll live uh and with that the the final crowning thing which i think we already know the answer to brad would you keep reading two on ice no, it sucked. No, of course. I'm Someday keep... we have to find one of those. Someday I have to. I'm gonna. So it's some future episode. I'm gonna have to find something like Brad was going to hate this, and I don't. I don't know if it's possible, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You gotta be subscribed to find out. Yeah. Um. I mean, again, I always read these things because I'm part of the death cult now. Mm. Um. But like I said, I'm caught up in its flow, and it's one that I'm like, oh yeah, I'll read this one. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to see what happens next it's just a curiosity to see what direction they take it and where it's going and obviously i've read the next couple of chapters so i am still reading it yeah and i'm still i feel like i'm still stuck in its flow to give a little thing uh i guess the uh, thing we didn't hit is where do you think it will go what's what's your what's that's, your prognostication that's a that's a tougher one um because i can see it going in in a lot of different directions pick this one early on you get one I think the sort of the classic way that it'll go that sort of I expect it to go is that they will train together. They'll grow closer. There'll be some ups and downs. They'll work towards going to a competition. They'll eventually go to a competition. They probably won't win the first one because you got to have a down before you have an up and they'll get back on it and they'll work harder and maybe they have another conflict and then eventually they'll win a a big competition and maybe go international or whatever. Welcome to the flow of a sports yeah. manga. It's still great. Even if you can kind of go, yeah, here are the general things, but also sometimes you get surprised. So <laughs> thank you everybody for listening to our episode of Shonen Jump on the Gun on two on ice, which you can read on the Shonen Jump app. I believe still right now you can read the first couple of chapters, which is now all the chapters for free. So if you want to go check it out, if you're listening to this uh, near when it came out, now's the time. And viz.com. And viz.com. And if you would like to play a version of this at home um, with us, you can go find uh, us on the Shonen Flop Discord, a different podcast Discord, which you should also check out, uh, where I've started up the Flop Pool, where every time we have a new manga, I have everybody do very similar to our current voting style. We say between Certified Flop and a Supernova from the first chapter, uh, what you think it's going to be, and you know we'll check in. We haven't actually had this yet, but we'll check in a certain amount of chapters later and look back and laugh at how wrong or right all of us were and enjoy the joys of jumping the gun on things <laughs> when you have very little information and trying to making these wide reaching predictions on things. So, uh, and with that, Brad hit me with them plugs. Yeah. So we want to thank Segoy Mart for partnering with us. Uh, Segoy Mart is a retailer of Japanese snacks, drinks, toys, and merch. They have a lot of cool stuff. You can't get outside of Japan. And if you use the link in the description or use code APR15 at checkout, you can get 15% off your first order, which also helps us out. And you can let us know what you think on social media, which you can find links for on our website, animepodcasterreincarnation.com. You can also leave comments about these podcast episodes and also find other posts and reviews. We've got a Discord where you can chat with us. Uh, you should join our Discord and the Shonen Flop Discord. Um, and you can check us out on Patreon. Supporters get perks like getting to vote on which series to cover on uh, our heroin addiction episodes. 
as well as getting the high-quality stereo version of the podcast early. And we'd love to hear what perks you'd like. Not only do you get those nice perks, you can also get a shout-out, which here's our patron shout-outs. So, first of all, we have to shout-out friend of the show, Moon, who is a moderator over on the r slash Otomi Isekai Discord. Next, we got Rena, long-time fan of the show, uh, first commenter. We appreciate Rena very much. Next, we got Cake Dwarf, who we've been having some fun conversations with on the Discord. And last but not least, Kill Hour, who is also active on the Discord. So thanks so much to our patrons. And don't forget to check out the Mainline podcast, that time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster. And Brad, let's go couple skating. <laughs>